Hey guys, welcome back to All on Law. In this video, I'm gonna talk briefly about fetal circulation. Okay, so let me give you very important points and in a very short time. Okay, so let's start with the fetal circulation, and this is really very important to understand because. Um, if you if you understand the fetal circulation, it will help you to understand uh, various diseases, congenital heart diseases uh, like PDA, uh, okay, uh, ASD, VSD, right? So this is really very important. So let's start about this. So to start with this, I would like to draw a placenta over here. Okay, this is the placenta. Let me write the P. And these are the what you call the baby this is the baby b and this is the mom okay so from the placenta the what you call the various arteries there is an anastomosis of the various arteries over here right and the placenta is a is a is an organ that that helps in the exchange of the blood for the baby right for the what you call for an embryo right you can call it as so mom when she you know when she breathes she she purifies the blood for the baby right so the baby has its different what you call the blood vessels over here okay so let's take a one blood vessels that is the umbilical umbilical vein okay and let's suppose this is the umbilical vein right so this umbilical vein it goes into the what you call here we have the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava IVC so it goes okay and this inferior vena cava goes inside the liver so this is the if this is the liver over here okay so let me draw over here this is the liver right and this umbilical vein goes and anastomosis with what you call the inferior vena cava in the liver giving a small branch to the liver okay so when the blood starts coming from the placenta it ascends through the umbilical, umbilical vein and it goes and in the liver and in liver this umbilical vein is anastomosed with the inferior vena cava so the blood gets diverted to the inferior vena cava but the here is as we know that inferior vena cava collects the impure blood from the lower part of the body, that's why the blood is very impure or deoxygenated, right? But as soon as this umbilical vein, this umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood, right? The placenta has oxygenated the blood and sent the blood through umbilical vein. So the oxygenated blood and this, the deoxygenated blood gets mixed over here at this point okay at this point so what happens it becomes both the oxygenated and the deoxygenated so in general the inferior vena cava what it is carrying the blood before the anastomosis of the umbilical vein now it it, it is carrying um, the more oxygenated compared to the previous one right before the anastomosis of umbilical vein so it ascends upwards okay right then it goes on to the heart let me draw over here heart okay i don't have enough space right so when it comes over here from here right okay remember right okay so one thing i forgot to tell you over here is this umbilical vein over here and the anastomosis of umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava in the liver the area the ligament is known as ductus venosus ductus venosus remember okay right okay so now we are moving this is uh, this is ductus venosus over here this is inferior vena cava right so when this blood ascends upwards okay when the blood ascends upwards it goes into where drains into the what you call the left the sorry the right atrium right this is the right atrium so from the right atrium it gets drained into the right ventricle right 
from the right ventricle through the pulmonary arteries through the pulmonary artery it should go to the lungs this is lung since the lungs are not functioning in in the in the, in the embryos or in the fetus which is not born in the baby right so because of this what happens there is increased resistance in the lungs and the blood what you call gets accumulated in the pulmonary artery but it forms a communication between the pulmonary artery and the aorta okay if this is the aorta right aorta comes from right right left ventricle right left ventricle so this forms a communication and this communication is known as can you guess what it is called as mm -hmm. right ductus arteriosus that's why if it's persistent after the birth it should close uh, as soon as the baby is born then it's known if it does not close then it's known as a patent ductus arteriosus okay guys right so from the aorta again the blood goes to the what you call to the different parts of the body and to the internal iliac artery also as it enters the internal iliac artery let me draw over here is the aorta aorta from the internal iliac artery it goes to the placenta through the umbilical artery so in umbilical artery the deoxygenated blood comes and gets drained into the placenta so placenta purifies again the blood and sends through the umbilical vein okay guys the one reason the one thing that you should remember is this lung as it is filled with the fluid inside the when the baby is inside the womb right so it has a great resistance and the umbilical vein which carries the oxygenated blood during the fetal life it has high content of uh, prostaglandins so as soon as the baby is born okay the lung starts functioning so there is what you call uh, uh, decreased resistance and the prostaglandin levels are low suddenly they decrease and that results in the closure of ductus arteriosus okay right guys so this is i think uh, I, I i tried my level best to explain you guys about this uh, um, fetal circulation. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.